Hey, this is Daniel Grove coming at you with a new Spaceship Kit Bash set that's available right now on Gumroad. It's just about to be available on Blender Market. By the time you see this, it probably will be. And I am so fracking excited that it's finally done. I've been working on this for months and it's been one of the funnest projects I've done. As you likely know, I love Star Wars. I am one of the biggest fans of Star Wars that I personally know. And I love the aesthetic that Star Wars brings to the spaceship designs. It's very unique. Sometimes it's asymmetrical. It's dirty. It's messy. It's it's not perfect and clean like Star Trek and other sci-fis, and I really enjoy that realism of it. So I thought, you know what? I need to make a kit bash. Uh, some other artists that I've seen online have been making some amazing Star Wars original ships themselves. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a kit bash. I just need to start. And I did. I got books from the library. I got a bunch of references. I watched a bunch of videos and lots of homework to make this come alive and do my best to match the Star Wars look and feel. So in this video, I'm going to show you what is included. I'm also going to show you you a bunch of cool tricks with textures, how the procedural stuff works, how to use vertex paint to add burns and color to your models without having to paint actual images and map them. I'm also going to show you some really efficient ways to actually build spaceships with this and these techniques will apply to all kinds of kit bashing and other products that you may find online. So even if you don't buy this product which is $20 I'm sure you're going to learn some really great stuff from this video. So let's get started. I am using K-Cycles X 3.2 when you open the file, it's going to look somewhat similar to this. I am in material preview mode, so, and for some reason, my outliner is not in view layers. There we go. So over here, we've got all the collections with the individual pieces. I have it nicely organized for you with little red borders so you know what's what and where the pieces are. They're all named and organized nicely. As you can see, these parts are very high detail. I did not spare a polygon count. This is not a low poly uh, kit. Let me just go to model mode so you can, object mode so you can see more of the nice detail there. These are the larger chunks for like Tantive size ships. Um, we've got some disc pieces for Corellian freighters like the Falcon. Um, some bigger chunks here. This is like a, this one has kind of like hangar bays where the ships can come out of. But I'm mostly focusing on ships that are medium to small size, like Falcon to X-Wing size. That's mostly what this kit is focused on. But with some creativity, you can definitely make larger ships. Eric did, did some uh, beta testing for me, and he made a straight up Star Destroyer, and it looked legit. And he used this piece right here, which is basically like an A-Wing size ship. <laughs> and he turned it into a Star Destroyer, and it looked amazing. Uh, so here are the body pieces, one of my favorite parts here. Let me go to render view so you can really see the beauty of these models. I have uh, custom made textures, which are seamless, um, but there's also procedural stuff layered on top of them, such as edge wear, dirt, and other imperfections uh, to just really bring these to life. This is a B-Wing type body piece, as is this kind of a larger, bulkier B-Wing model. Uh, we got some kind of military looking ships, some fighters. Uh, some freighters for like luggage and storage containers under here. Some kind of hexagonal wide shapes for different stuff. Some weird chunky pieces you can use creatively to fill in gaps. This one's actually made to go on top of here like that. Um, this is like a double tie thing here. So lots of different pieces that you can mix and match. The cockpits are also really beautiful. I had a ton of fun making these. Lots of reference photos and experimentation here. Got some uh, Thai styled ones over here. This one's actually um, inspired by the snow speeder. Of course, they had to have some awesome weapons here for different types of ships. Some articulated guns and some stationary ones. You know I love my engines. How to make some sweet engines here. Uh, these look like a bunch of pod racer engines because that's basically what they are. Um, they're from large to small. These are modeled after all different scales and types of ships. And again, thanks to Eric Stitt who did beta testing for me. He said, one thing you're missing is landing gear. I said, oh my gosh, you're right. We got to have some sweet landing gear. So I made a bunch of different sets here from simple and small to really big and heavy duty complex stuff. These could definitely be animated if you do a little bit of rigging um, or hierarchy with the models, but I didn't really focus on that. I just wanted to make stationary landing gear if you want to make a landing scene for it, you know, on the ground already. I also made a whole bunch of sensor uh, antennas, a few dishes, some sci-fi crates and tanks. Here's a bunch of different pipes that can fit all kinds of different angles. I'll show you how to snap these onto surfaces really easily la later. 
And even though I already have a Star Wars Greeble kit out there, which you can purchase for like $7, I think it is, I made some uh, Greebles for this set as well to decorate your ships with. But if you're really going to add a bunch of delicious little Greeble details, go check out my Galaxy Greebles kit out there. It's on Gomeroon and Blender Market. Um, we got some round hatches and some round pieces, some cylinders, like walkways and tunnels, some big old chunky things I literally call chunks uh, to fill in gaps and kind of build up a shape around your ship. These over here are just my example cubes to show some of the different materials that are included in this uh, product. And boy, howdy, are they beautiful. They are layers of PBR images, which you can use, mix and match however you want. They are seamless and they are mostly panel type textures, you know, basically like spaceship hulls and stuff like that. Um, there are a few purely procedural ones. And even my image texture ones are mixing procedural stuff on top. So there's a lot of really fun stuff you can do, including colors, color ramp, making them shinier or dirtier, lots of options there. Let me zoom into one of these models here and I'm gonna play with this texture to kind of show you what it can do. So I'm gonna split my screen right there, get my shader window. And this is using the whole one uh, material, which is, which, is a, which is the darker gray metal. The other one is the bright metal hole. You can, of course, change these to whatever you want. You can just easily switch it by selecting one of these here to replace it. But let me show you what this one does. So I'm going to zoom in here. And we've got a few different additions on top of the image texture. Uh, so first, we've got the edging. So I have a custom uh, DG Edge Detect node, which is part of my sci-fi shaders product. Um, so I'm going to increase the size here, and you'll see the white shininess around the edges getting larger. Let me find a good edgy spot. There we go, small and tight, large. Uh, we can add noise to it or we take it away. Right now this is no noise, but if we add noise, it essentially chops it up and makes it dirtier and more unpredictable. And I have a secondary layer of noise too to help further break that up. There we go, we got control over the scale. You've got control over the scale of that noise too. So we can add kind of both of them in there to get like a nice broken edge. You can control how much edge there is. You can control how much texture is being added from the image node. Um, we've got two uh, vertex editions, vertex for black burn marks and a vertex edition for coloring. And I'll show you how to use those later. They're awesome. It's a great hack. So you don't actually have to um, paint image textures and map them and have a different image texture for each for each mesh. Uh, I'll get to it later. <laughs> um, I've got the ambient occlusion, of course, which adds a little grit and darkness to the corners. A random value, which uh, basically breaks up this mesh into separate um, faces and gives them a dark or light random value just to add some more variation to, especially for larger holes. You don't want it to be all the same shade. Here's the node to add dirt, which is coming from a moose grave down here. You know, really lots of fine, small marks, or you want to make them really big, make a small number like that. We've got a color ramp here to control uh, what the noise is doing. I'm actually mixing between two different moose graves here. So let's do a mix to the other one, more gritty, a little bit softer. Somewhere near the middle is usually what I like to do. This noise also goes into the roughness, which controls the shiny areas, and you have mix options for that as well. So there's mixing for the color, you know, the surface base color, and there's mixers for the roughness. And I did label them. So add noise is going to add that noise to the roughness map. This one adds the texture to the roughness map. You can't quite see it here. If we got some light glancing off of it, you'd be able to see what's really happening. And we can also control the edge going to roughness too, which is cool. Some of these image textures are also going to the bump map, which is giving some uh, kind of simulation of geometry and some nice edging. Let's turn that up a lot. See where if we can find a, a good, a nice mesh that shows us some, some detail from the bump. Let's go to this one. I'm gonna turn my dirt down because I got a lot of dirt going on. Turn down the noise to the roughness and turn down the noise to color. There we go. So let's go back down to the bump. So no bump, all the way bump. And you can, of course, go above one too by typing in numbers, but that makes it a little bit, a little bit weird. And you'll see in the textures folder, there's the height maps, which are TIFF files. They're high quality TIFF files. So there's no artifacts and weird noise that you get with PNGs and JPEGs. Um, I try to get the highest quality image for those height maps specifically so that they give you really good bump and clean geometry. There's also a hole two, which is a variation of hole number one. 
Uh, if you look through the nodes, you'll kind of pick up on where that is. And you can also pick a starting color, which is usually this very first node. So if you wanted to have, you know, a solid color, you can do that. And then everything after that gets layered on top of it. Got a few different solid metal shaders here for different imperfect metals. And again, you can turn up and down this noise. It's totally customizable. Got a dark metal here. And then here's my panel textures that I have custom made. So I actually have a tutorial on how to make these panel textures. If you want to learn to do it yourself, it's really fun. But I made a bunch of really nice ones and have prepackaged them with this product. Uh, this one is really cool. It has um, a uh, constant color ramp here, which allows you to decide how much of it gets the color that you pick. So you pick a color down here. And uh, based on the threshold here, you can colorize it. You can even add a second one of this to add a, you know, kind of like a contrary color. But I really like that red. I have a procedural solar panels uh, shader, which is great for these tie wings over here. You can control the, free, the size of these cells, of course, and they're reflective, just like solar panels are, and it looks beautiful. Now, if you load up the file and you find that some of these ships are pink, that is because there are missing texture files. The way to fix that is first, you have to download the textures zip file, move those files into a folder of your own on your hard drive. That is where you ever, wherever you put textures, you maybe even label it, you know, Daniel Grove, Star Wars, uh, ship bash textures, and that's where they reside. And then you need to go up to file, external data, find missing files and you locate to that folder and like right here this is what it should look like and you just click find missing files and it'll go through all these folders and basically fix all the um file links all the file paths and make everything work so that's what pink means it means a missing file path or a broken file path let's say you don't like how the textures look on a certain area like it's maybe too detailed or not detailed enough super easy to fix that um, go to your uv editor tab into edit mode on one of the meshes and you can either select an area that you don't like like this little you know, surface panel i'm going to grab a few of these there 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 i'm going to press Control l to grab the whole thing as you can see it's a three-dimensional panel on top and here it is now if i press s and scale this up in the uv editor like big time it gets way more detail, which would make sense for a larger mesh. But if this is going to be a smaller ship, then you want to size it down in the UV editor, which makes the image texture, which is you can't see it here. You could load it, I suppose, if you can find the right one. Um, but I just grabbed a random one here. But as you size it up, it covers more of the image or size it down, it covers less the image. Um, maybe you don't like a particular area. You can just G and move it. So you can slide it up or down, left and right, and just kind of almost randomize the texture and find a new area that I do like. Or you can grab the whole thing by pressing A, and you can scale that all the way down to make it maybe a smaller ship or up to make it more greebly detail um, like that. All right, let's talk about this vector painted burn marks and color. This is something that I literally discovered and uh, I'm first featuring it in this video, actually. I was gonna make a tutorial for it, but I just didn't have time. So if you look at these engines real closely, you may notice some beautifully burnt areas. That's not painted onto textures in the traditional way. These are painted using vertex paint. I'm sorry if I said vector earlier, I meant vertex. And I'll show you how I did that. So basically vertex painting gives a painted value, I guess RGB or black and white value to each vertex. And you can display that in the textures if you set up the nodes right. So what I did was over here I have an attribute node set to COL, which is the name of the vertex painted layer, which is controlled here. Color attributes COL is for the burn marks and then COL.01 is for color. So let's say I want to paint some burn marks on here. I'm going to, with the object selected, go to vertex paint. <clears throat> and here we have a paintbrush, turn the strength all the way up or down, whatever you want. And white will clean it up. Oh, you got to select the correct vertex paint over here. Now I can paint, look at that. This is the actual texture. This is what it's supposed to look like. Nice, clean, and white. It's literally called bright metal, I think. I'm cleaning up the edges, clean it up here. So I'm painting white onto these vertexes. It's being layered as you know color data into the color, the base color here. It's being added by multiply, which means if I paint black, watch this, I can press X to flip flop my colors just like in Photoshop. Thank you, Blender, for doing that, by the way. I appreciate the similar keyboard shortcuts. Now I can paint some beautiful burn marks on the back here. Boom, boom. And give it a realistic, you know, singed metal look. 
Because if there's high energy or ion or fire come out of this, you better believe there's going to be some burn mark. Now, the only con I found to this is that it's not high quality. As you can tell, each vertex is kind of like a pixel. Now, it's a soft pixel. You don't get any hard pixelization, but it's not very high quality. That looks actually pretty cool because I like streaks, but that's about as high quality as you can get with this mesh. If there's more vertices, if it's higher poly, you get better control because you have more vertex uh, resolution to paint. But um, that's the only con to this. The pros are, I think, outweigh it because I don't have to have an image for every mesh. I'm not um, painting to an image. I don't have to save the images. It's all kind of stored as mesh data, I think, um, inside Blender for each mesh. So even though these engines are all using the same um, material and textures, these burn marks are unique to each mesh, which is awesome. I just love that. And for the Star Wars look, uh, this is totally, totally perfect. You can color things similarly. So let's move on to this engine over here. I really like this one. Kind of inspired by the Y-Wing engine slightly. And I don't know what's going on back here, but it sure looks awesome. Um, so let's paint some actual color. So we need to select the vertex. And I actually have a mistake here. I need to fix this. I'm going to delete black, add one, call it col.01. Um, these are fine. I'm going to, I'm going to make, um, and this, this vertex paint is going to be used as actual color data layered as a color in the, in the nodes up here. So let's get back into paint mode. And I'm going to grab uh, a strong color. Let's do a bright blue. And I should be able to paint actual color in here. I just noticed the vertex color is turned down just in case. Um, so I need to turn that up. There we go. I also realized I just turned that up on the gun basic material, which is only used for one part. So let me go to the whole material, which is basically, which is most of the mesh here. Turn that up. There we go. These are, this is what I've been painting the whole time. And as you can see, I have it turned down just in case there's weird stuff going on. Um, so ignore that. <laughs> I was probably just experimenting and forgot to turn it off. Uh, but we can unpaint it by using white, something with no saturation, or we can paint other colors. And again, it's kind of a, it's like a low poly painting mode. You don't have the resolution that you do with actual pixels, but it's good for if you want to paint solid chunks. Um, you can grab individual uh, connected faces and you can paint them that way. You can do that by grabbing a piece. So let's grab these back fins and you need to turn on this little guy up here. Paint mask, face selection, masking for painting. So turn that on, grab some of these faces. I'm going to hold shift and I want to hold shift and select a few of these. Do, 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 do. I'm going to press control L to grab the whole connected faces. And now I'm good to paint. Look, if I just left click, I'm only painting these fins. It's not bleeding or leaking onto anything else. So that is really nice. If you want to add some detailed pieces, um, let's do, let's see what, what, let's see what grabs. If I do control L on that. Ooh, cool. Let's make this one uh, blue. Awesome. Nice and clean. Don't need to worry about mistakes. Let's see about this. Does that grab the whole thing? Yeah, I've got some individual fins about this piece. Control L, by the way, is really handy. Grab this front dish here and just finish that blue. Grab this thing. Make it red. You get the idea. Then you turn off masking mode and here you have these solid painted pieces. And that's great. Now this, this engine over here is driving me crazy. I'm going to unpaint this one by selecting it, going to vertex mode, make sure I'm on, um, make sure I've got the, uh, this one selected, which is for color. And I'm going to paint something with no saturation. So white or black should work. And there we go. Because this mesh has its own vertex paint data. I am essentially getting rid of the color that I didn't know I was painting. And there we go. Cool, cool, cool. Have fun with color schemes on your spaceships. All right, let's talk about asset browsing and uh, we'll get to building an actual ship and I'll show you how I do that. When you put my blend file on your hard drive, I suggest that you make it a read only file so you don't actually screw up any of the data in here. You won't be able to save it until you save a separate file, which you could name, you know, test or ship number one or Corellian test three or whatever. But I have screwed up original kit bash files before and I really regretted it. The way you do that is you find your folder, 
find your file. This is the original file that you purchase and download. Right click on it, go to properties and turn on read only, apply and okay. And now I can't save changes to this, right? It's locked, which is good. Okay, so the asset browser in Blender is great. It's a convenient way to drop stuff in and build things. If you like the asset browser, here's how to use it. You wanna grab all your pieces, Oh, I'm still in vertex paint mode. Grab your pieces and over here, if you press period, it'll show you the piece. If you have books here, that means it's marked as an asset. I marked all these pieces of assets already in the original file. So with the asset browser open, go to a current file and go down to unassigned. This will show all the things that are not assigned a category or I sorry, a catalog over here. I have not figured out how to successfully transfer my organizational you know choices here to a file that you download for some reason i just haven't figured out yet so you may want to you're going to need to do this yourself you can make your own category similar to mine drop in the pieces into each uh, catalog they are well named you know chunk cockpit engine so that makes it really easy you can use the search bar up here and just organize them however you want and then you can drag and drop them like so building your ship putting stuff wherever you want it to begin building your ship. But if you're like me, uh, when I use Kitbash sets, setups like this, I don't like to use this. I actually build from within the 3D viewport. So what I do is I may have a 3D viewport up here set to wireframe, and this will actually be looking at the pieces. So I can kind of grab from up here. This is sort of my asset browser. Uh, maybe use seven for above you, there we go. And then down here is where I'm actually doing the building. Let's delete this with a box select, letter B and delete. And here is a really convenient way to build with this style. So first I'm going to press A to select everything and G, Y, Y to move it up here. I want it out of the way of this center. This is zero, zero, zero right here in the middle. If I press shift C, it puts my 3D cursor in the middle. And this is where I'm going to actually build my ship. I like to use the, the zero position as basically my central axis for my spaceship. I show you what I mean. So I'm going to pick a few pieces here real quick, and I'm going to um, put them in the middle and I'll start building. I'm going to speed this part up a little bit. OK, once I've selected all my pieces holding shift, I'm going to press shift D to duplicate these. Now they're all up here, which is good. I'm leaving the originals there. These are my new copies that I'm going to play with. I can model these and change them and they won't mess with the originals. And now here's a great trick. Watch this. If I press Alt G, it resets G, which is location, right? Or the move tool is G. So now they're all in the middle. If I press period, these are all the pieces stacked on top of each other. And now I'm going to um, click on these and I'm just going to drag them out and kind of spread them out to where I want them um, out of the way, out of the center area. There we go. I do want this to be in the middle. So select it again in Alt G or Option G and Mac. And now I'm ready to basically start building. So uh, I want the cockpit in the middle, of course, centered. So GZ, move it up right around there. Maybe scale it down to give the impression of a larger fighter ship. And I want to put this back onto the flat area of this um, body piece. If I press numpad one, it goes to a front view, which is a little messy because they have all that stuff back there. If you want to clean this up, you'll need to hide those other collections. But I, I, this is actually still in those other collections. So here's another good tip. B for box select, grab your selected stuff, press M, new collection, and name it ship one. And name it ship one. Now these are in their own collection right here. And I can hide the other ones. Watch this. It'll clean it up. Just hide everything except for ship one and hide that one there. Okay, cool. So now if I press one, it's all nice and clean in the background. Can move this engine, connect it right there. Got a cool wing, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Seven for above view, I'm gonna connect it right there. Maybe make this wing a little bit thinner, so SZ. Another great thing about this set is that the scales are all flexible. I made that like that on purpose. I didn't want things to be set in stone as to how big things had to be. You know, there's no rule with this kind of stuff. You could use this piece on a big ship or a small escape pod. And that's that's that was my intention is that uh, things I wanted things to be flexible. Scale that down. Cover up that circle vent. There you go. Cool. Put this laser cannon over here. And I'm gonna show you how to easily copy one side to the other, and it will still reflect changes that you do later. So you can move stuff around on the other side, will instantly update and copy what you do. 
All right, and here's the trick right here. Select the part you want to copy to the other side. Go to the modifiers. Most of my objects in the kit do have modifiers on them, mostly mirror modifiers, because a lot of stuff is somewhat symmetrical. So I left that like that on purpose so you could customize it and change it however you want. Um, and also see so if you edit one part, the other part is mirrored. So let's add another mirror modifier. And I love this trick because it's so easy. Use the select and uh, grab the central object to your ship, which is why I use this perfect zero location and change the axis to where you want. There we go. Let's do the same to this engine. Add another mirror modifier. Sample the central body piece. It needs to be mirrored on the Y, and there we go. Let's do this gun on the Y. Awesome, there we go. All right, now time for an awesome tip here that's gonna use snap and allow you to stick stuff onto weird angles super quickly so you're not lining stuff up. You can even move something from like way across the screen right onto your ship really fast. So watch this. I'm gonna put this way over here in the totally wrong area, okay? It's way, I can't even see it, it's clipping. So I wanted to stick right here. So what you do is turn on your snap, which is control tab to toggle that on and off. And you need two selections checked. You need face selected and then go down and check a line rotation to target. That's pretty much all you need to do. Now, if I press move, it's just G, look at that. It's already snapping onto the faces here. And it goes a little crazy because I do have a lot of little faces that it's detecting. And this is actually inverted, which is okay. I can flip this around. I like to use local pivot point which is kind of like normals, but it's not looking at normals. It's looking at the mesh and the direction of things. So watch this, R, Y, 180. There we go, it's perfectly lined up here. Now I can do R, Z, 90, awesome. And just, oh, I gotta turn off my snap. When you wanna move things freely, turn off snap. There we go, line it up. And it is perfectly on that face. You can sink it in a little bit if you want. Make it more subtle. There we go. So that uh, snap thing is really great for sticking greebles and stuff onto things. I need an awesome engine back here to complement these little engines. So I'm going to use this big one here. Shift D, Alt G. Now it's over here. See how fast that is? I am all about low effort and maximum output. In other words, I'm a lazy artist. And you probably are too. There we go. I love that, looks nice. Let's go to rendered view and see what this is looking like. Oh yeah, nice and dirty, cool panels. Let's play with some other material options and see what looks we can get with this guy. So right now it's using bright metal for the body. Everything else is whole one. So let's go to whole one, give it a uniform look. There we go, not bad. Let's try the other panel textures. So panels three, got some very defined geometric shapes. Panel four, got some nice golden chunks here, which I believe you can control the threshold like I showed earlier. Yeah, here it is. And here's the color control. It's nice and subtle right now. It's not like super in your face color. Let's give it a nice orange, cool. I love how that grows, that's really cool. Okay, now if we like this and we want to uh, apply it to the other ones really quickly, just select all your pieces that you want it to apply to. There we go, and there. And then lastly, select the one that has the material you want. See how this is brighter orange? That means this is your active object, and these are just you know also selected, but this is your active one. Now I press Control L for link, and select link materials. And voila, they all have the same material. Now, like I said earlier, if one of them has too much high detail, like this has a little bit, it's a little bit busy. I'm going to um, make that a little simpler. So tab and edit, press A for all, shrink those down and maybe move it. I, want, I do want some color. Let's see what happens if I turn this at a 45. Oh, it's not exactly a 45. So let's go to an above view for seven. Rotate it just freestyle. There we go. Oh, that's cool. That gives a great sense of style. And I did not mirror this. Tisk tisk. Modifiers, mirror. Sample the central object. You can sample any object as long as it's in the middle, or it'll be, you know, sticking out weird. Cool. I'm going to um 
rotate this up on the motor. So watch this. I'm going to move the origin point. You're getting way more than you bargained out of this video. Origin point to the center of the motor. Turn that off. R. Oh, yeah. And now watch this. We can not only mirror on the uh, Y, but also the Z. Oh, that's great. I think there's an older public fighter that looks like this, similar to this. You can move this back a little bit, sticking off the edge. Or maybe I just didn't have it down enough. Okay, once I make a ship, if I have a scene with a bunch of ships in them, here's a nice tip. I like to use an empty to control where it is. So shift A with my 3D cursor in the middle, which it is, shift A, empty and make a circle and then size it up to basically encompass the size of the ship like that. And we don't have to be outside the ship and you can move it to wherever you want, but kind of in the central, you know, uh, central point of gravity here. Now with this selected, press B for box select, select everything else and then control P enter. Now everything is parented to this nice, easy to grab circle. I can rotate this for animation. I can move it, keyframe it, all that stuff. And if I want to reset, I can press alt G alt R. To reset if you have any weird rotation alt r resets rotation and that makes it super easy make sure to move this to that collection of ship one any new pieces we may have added like like that back engine piece is still in the engine collection uh, i want it to be in the ship one collection so just b box select everything m ship one there we go now i can turn all these other collections off of the render right turn off engines and uh I do want collection to render, but I don't want these borders to render, which is the red borders back there. So just turn all of those off. Okay. Okay, let's make a camera object by going to Shift A and click on camera. And then with your view set to however you want the camera to look, press Control Alt Zero, and that will set the active camera. Whatever is set to active uh, will basically line up to your view. So that's a nice, easy way to align your camera. I'm going to move it out a little bit, show the whole thing. Let's hit render, which is F12. And there we go. It's a little busy, but you know, I'm basically just showing off to you in this video so you'll buy my product. <laughs> Don't you love the honesty? Um, if this is, yeah, it's a little busy for Star Wars. I would probably tone it down a lot, add some dirt, uh, maybe some broken pieces. I don't know. But as you can see, lots of possibilities in a relatively short amount of time. I've built ships anywhere between two and five minutes and they look great. You know, that's, that's like 80 percent of your work right there done. Then you can fine tune stuff by, you know, fixing my stuff, modeling it, adding your own things, tweaking the materials. I do have an HDR image uh, being used right now, which is packaged with the product. I'm going to turn that off by deleting it and disconnecting that environment texture. So it's just a black sky background. I do have two, I do have a light in this scene already. So I'm gonna play with that right now and try to get a cool result. So it is a sunlight, you can see right here, sun, which is important. Um, it's a very harsh light at five degrees and I can just press RR to rotate my light however I want. I want this to really glance off the shapes here. So like something like that, it looks nice. I love that and now, uh, I'm going to add a counter light to fill in these shadows just a little bit. So wherever my sunlight is, it doesn't matter because the light is always going to hit it the same way from the straight angle. Um, so back to camera view with my sun selected shift D to make another one. Let's give it a little color. So blue and then RR. And now we can look at this. We can add sort of a counter, you know, color cast maybe from a planet or a star or an explosion. Um, don't make it too strong because it can be distracting. And it's slightly unrealistic unless you have something in space that's truly emitting light, like a planet or a bright energy source like an engine. But with a little bit of rim lighting like this can be pretty nice. And I usually turn it down and lower than the main sunlight. So right now the blue lights at four. My sunlight is at 10. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So from five degrees up to maybe 20 degrees, it fills in a little bit more. So this is before. There you go. Much more cinematic. Uh, you know, you just need some camera shake, have this thing fly past the camera, a bunch of laser bolts flying everywhere in a crap ton of motion blur, and it'll look like a scene from a new Star Wars movie. So there you have it. I hope you guys are interested in this type of product. I hope you get it and have tons of fun with it. And please, pretty please, with a cherry on top, send me your gosh darn renders. I love seeing what people make with my products. It always uh, intrigues me, and I, I always find myself saying, I never thought of using it that way. So if you have any questions in the comments down below, please ask. 
if you get the product and you have any suggestions or if you find something that's wrong or broken, which is definitely a highly likely, um, just write me and say, hey, uh, I noticed this problem. I will do my best to fix it and update it for you. Thanks again for watching this video. Please subscribe and have a great week.